Is it going? Okay, yes. <laughs> Um, the light is streaming in and it's a beautiful day and welcome to the Peace Coach. I wanted to bring you a video today, the wrong way to approach a man for married women. I might do um, one for single ladies out there at one point, but today I wanted to focus on married women. Um, so in your, you're in a relationship and the wrong way to approach a man. And I've coined these terms um, <laughs> from experience speaking to many women, uh, experience as a chaplain speaking to um, teenage girls that are in relationships and just general life experience. Um, so I hope this helps you. And today I will try and keep it as short as possible. <laughs> um, these topics are so passionate, like they're passionate topics for me, so I find it really hard to contain myself in a certain um, time frame. But I know you're all busy and time is precious and we need to be very respectful of other people's time. So I'm going to try and keep this as short as possible. Let's see if we can go for under 10 minutes. Okay, so, um, I think if I did do a dating one, um, like a vetting, I use that word better than dating, but a vetting process one, um, I think it would be an extremely short video. Uh, I would pretty much say, don't approach a man. Um, you know, you let them approach you. <laughs> you let them hunt and gather you and you let them pursue you. So yeah, I don't know if I'll do a dating one, but um, for married women, we'll start with the notion of the overwhelmed day approach. So this is what I coined the overwhelmed day approach. So say for instance, the scenario where you um, have had an overwhelming day in your mind, in your mind, and that's real for you. So, um, but if I can give you a heads up on the way men think, men, men don't think as, uh, uh, well, they don't think the same as women. Let's just get that out <laughs> straight away. And I'm sure you all know that already, so it's not a great news flash for you. But men do not think the way you think. And particularly if we take the scenario of a man's been out at work all day, and he comes home and he's literally faced with, uh, yeah, the overwhelmed day approach. So you've had a hard day with the children. You've um, had the dog... I don't know, poop on the floor and vomit and you had to wipe it up. You you had so many things you had to deal with in that day that when he walks in the door, you're overwhelmed. And, and almost there's an element of resentment that he's been out of the house, he's had such a great day um, in our mind's perception and um, I've been left with this, you know, whatever this is. So um, I think personally a woman's role in the home is um, should be honored and respected and valued by the man uh, it is extremely hard and it is a 24 7 non-stop giving and sacrificial <laughs> system of giving yourself and it's relentless and you know there there has to be compassion from the man's side um, and maybe I'll do another video on on how he should approach a woman like this. But, you know, there needs to be compassion and understanding. But we're talking from the, the female um, perspective of how to approach a man. So he's just walked in the door. You're overwhelmed and you've approached him saying, I've had to deal with the children all day. I've done this. I've done that. And you've approached him kind of before he's even said anything or maybe you said something but it's very soon you've approached him with your overwhelmed day so that right there is the wrong approach <laughs> so um i've done a video where i've talked about people having to kind of debrief on their journey home and whether the man's done that or not is up to him that's his self-responsibility of de, de um stressing from the day on his way home to greet you in a in a refreshing way <laughs> but he may not have done that um he may have a strategy where he comes home and he just needs most men need just a moment to um go from 
from where they were to where they are now. So women are very good at multitasking. We can have 101 things going on in our brain at the same time and sometimes it all comes out, <laughs> and that's another way not to approach a man, all comes out at once. And so, you know, if I can couple these two things, never come out at a man and approach a man with all these things all at once. So you've just approached him, he's come in the door, he hasn't compartmentalized yet, so he hasn't come out of his room of work, where whether that's the office in the house or wherever that is, and he's now got to shift into a different compartment in his brain. So men are very focused on one thing, um, and in my studies I've found that is absolute fact, whereas women, like I said, can have, some men can do this too, juggle a thousand and one things, and it can come out all different angles. We have way more words that we explain like a normal event, like that a man would just go, yeah, that happened. And we're like, yeah, but the way I felt about it was this. And they go into tangents and I so do that. <laughs> I'm like every single thought that went through my head as I was drinking that cup of tea. It's not just about drinking the cup of tea as I sat down. You know, and I looked out the window and yeah, I had a thought about mm, but men, it's like, yeah, I sat down and had a drink. Like, women just go into way more detail. <laughs> and that is is what can overwhelm a man. So your overwhelming day of all your things may not be what he considers an overwhelming day. And there's a perception thing there um, where he has to bring some grace into trying to understand why you feel overwhelmed but coming at him with all the things off the bat out of the racehorse thing you you bombarding him him with all the things your word count is just gone off the scale and you have approached him with your overwhelmed day approach so that is not going to work it might work if you've had an especially especially traumatic day <laughs> where it's a one-off or it's a one in a hundred but if that's your normal approach uh, to your partner um, that is not going to work um, <clears throat> this is, is really interesting um, the way men put you on a crazy scale <laughs> and all women are crazy right we understand each other's crazy men understand their each other's crazy whatever crazy is um they aren't they get it but a man will think a woman is just totally off her rocker uh if she um communicates in her language like i can communicate to another woman right and the woman will totally get me it'll be like yeah totally totally got you like not that that's that's a female way of talking but a dude, a dude, okay, a dude kill, yeah, man, like, totally, had, like, my wife's just, like, lost the plot, and he goes, yeah, I get you, and that will be it, like, that will be the conversation, whereas a woman will be, kind of like, my husband, he's, like, I want to feel loved and cuddled, and you know what, like, and she'll go into all the detail with another woman, and the other woman will be, like, yeah, I feel you crazy, man, like, I totally get it, <laughs> so, it's so relative to the way we speak and communicate and a man will very easily think you're nuts, think you're crazy if you approach him in your female uh, way of approaching. So you need to be very aware of letting a man come in the door and have his moment, have his, I'm shifting now, his time and approach him in a positive way. It doesn't mean you have to be lying or deceptive. It just means you're glad to see him. Like there's a really sexist, I have to say, book uh, written, I think, in the 19, I want to say 30s. Um, and it was all about instructions of, <laughs> sorry, making me laugh, instructions of how to, um, but actually, it's actually quite wise as well, how to approach a man when he comes home from work. Put a ribbon in your hair. <laughs> I just, sorry, I just think that was so funny when I read that. I was like, that's hilarious. It was all about ribbons back then. But, you know, men are visual and how you visually and audibly approach him 
will set up the evening. So rather than, sorry, I was finding it funny, rather than putting a ribbon in your hair, I mean, go ahead if that's what floats his boat, but um, the way you approach him, do it in a way that is, I guess the concept of a ribbon, it's happy. It's, you don't have to fake it. You can say, look, I've had a really tough day. It's so good to see you. Keep it simple. Uh, it's so good to see you or give him a hug. If his love language is hugs, <laughs> give him a hug. Uh, my love language is touch and quality time. So, um, but you've got to understand what they need from you. So, uh, but generally, universally, I don't care where you are from in the world. A man does not want to be bombarded as soon as he comes in the door with your negative, overwhelmed day approach. Um, I might... Um, I might trademark these names because because it, it it says what it is and it, it's not going to get you anywhere <clears throat> it's going to bring division strife contention contempt and all the things that John uh, Gottman um, has done studies on the Gottman Institute of the destruction of a marriage and when there's strife content it's like I think they call it the four horsemen and contempt is one of the you've got that your marriage is over and so you've got to guard that you've got to guard what you may be doing to take that responsibility of going okay maybe this is the wrong way I'm approaching my husband okay so that's one thing um so give him that time and and so say for instance you have had a really overwhelming day you can say it but say maybe later on this afternoon or later on tonight can I just have 10 minutes and I just want to tell you about my day and or he can say yeah just give me just give me five minutes or yeah let's talk about it now you're inviting him rather than demanding and throwing it all up on him <laughs> um there's a difference with men and this brings in me into a different point and I'll probably yeah I'll, I'll, I'll jump to this point now um the the just barge in approach so I'll, I'll segue into this right now. So the just barge in approach is where you would, for instance, the overwhelmed day approach where you throw up your day onto him. So you haven't invited him to talk about it. You haven't set a time up. Now, I know this might sound like really anal and really unromantic, but again, men think very compartmentalized. They all give their focus on this. Whereas women will be off on all like 10,000 and that's crazy in men's eyes, <laughs> but, um, to rein in you crazy and don't, um, do the throw up approach or the barge in approach. So the barge in approach would be, so say for instance, he's working from home and you just walk in and you say, right. So the children are just like literally driving me nuts. I need you to help me or um, you barge in and you say um, do you have any idea what's going on blah, blah 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 you barge in with the topic that you want to talk about and you throw it up at him right so the better way of approaching him about what you want to throw up and I'm blending all these terms that I've coined, um, would be to give him a heads up, right? Give him a heads up and um, a set time to approach. So if he's at work, don't just... Now, I'm a real stickler for this. I will not call someone when they're at work unless it's an emergency or unless they call me first and I miss their call. So I'll call them back. So when a man is at work, he's in work mode. He gets it done. He's doing his thing. They love work. That is their purpose. That is really important to them. You don't call them generally as, yeah, I mean, obviously you can call them. And I'm sure if they agree that that's fine that you call them and they call you back if they're in a meeting, that's your relationship agreement. But I generally don't call a man when they're at work. Um, if they call me, that means that they actually have the time to speak and I'll be guided by however long they can talk. 
So if they're at work and you need to speak to them, give them a heads up, give them a, is it okay to call you at two o'clock? And that could like give them an hour's notice or th so if there's an emergency, obviously call. I mean, that's an emergency. I'm talking about general ways that are wrong ways to approach a man. So you don't just call him, offload your day, um, call him a hundred times, expect him to pick up, get angry with him if he doesn't pick up. Um, he could be in a meeting, he could be, you know what, anything, number of things. He's at work. You don't bombard him again with your day, overwhelmed day approach, sneaks into the call. Um, you know, there's so many different ways we can um, barge in, just barge in, to their compartmental. So he's at work, he's in work mode. So don't frequently call. If you need to call, say, wait for him to call you and then talk about something. Can we talk about this later? I'm having a really hard time with X, Y, Z. Or can I call you at two o'clock? There's something I really wanna just have a quick chat to you about. But remember to keep it simple. Keep it simple, keep it man talk, and keep it to the point. Um, then you won't risk overwhelming him with your overwhelmed day, if that makes sense. So say for instance, he's in the office at, at your house. So you uh, would, uh, you obviously you would knock. <laughs> this is, I mean, this is common courtesy that we need to understand, does need to keep alive in a relationship. You'd knock um, and you'd enter and you would say, how's your day? How's your day going? How is everything going with you? Give him a chance to talk and say, look, is there a time today that suits you that I can have a chat to you about a few things? I'm worried about a few things and I wanted to just see what you thought about it. Again, keeping it simple, keeping it to the point, acknowledging that you need to have some time with him, especially if he's in the office, in the home. Um, you're respectfully approaching him with respect about his day and he could have his day sorted out in his head. And he could be about to go on a call. He can then have the opportunity to agree to that. So you're not, if you're not just barging in approach, it's actually a respectful, have you got some time that we can talk about something. Uh, he might say, look, give me an hour. I've just got a call. I'm about to have a meeting on Zoom or over the phone. It's a really important one. Is this really important? Can it wait? And you go, of course it can wait. And then they go, okay, how about... And I know it sounds really structured, but if you can approach a man in a structured, non-emotional way, uh, they'll be way more um, mutual mutual benefit from it. So um, so yeah, ask to book some time in with him. Is is it okay to approach you right now? Are you, are you in the middle of something? I mean, I always do that with no matter who I call on the phone. Is this a good time? It's just it's just a sign of respect and common courtesy that we need to maintain in a marriage. And the minute that goes out the window is the minute other things can come in. Contempt, strife, anger, confusion, misunderstandings, all of it. <clears throat> so communication is vital and a respectful way of communicating is vital. And so just check in to say, is this a good time? If you just randomly call and you go, I've got, I just want to tell him I love him. And you're randomly calling. I just wanted to tell you I love you. This is good a time to talk or can I just say that and we'll talk later? It's basic, <laughs> you know, like I'm not saying squish your your spontaneity and, and your um, expression of I just wanted to come in and give you a cuddle. Like, fine, that do that. That's your personality. That's fun. That's keeping it fun and light. And that needs to remain as well in a marriage. Humor, fun, light, fun, 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 fun. That should be another video. I'll do another video on that. So I've got so much. Um, about this dynamic through my experience of um, the studies I've done so and life experience so um, okay I'll go back now to where I was going before um, so this is what I I have 
I've called the walk and it's not going to be short sorry this video <clears throat> pardon me is this actually quite I don't know the lighting at the moment's really bad in here I do apologize pardon me what can you do for me approach so the what can you do for me approach is is uh coming from a space of non-giving so it it's like um uh, okay so for instance so i just have bullet points here like i'm just literally ad-libbing on what these points are so what can you do for me approach is is coming from a place of deficit and you do for me and I'll do for you. So if you do that, I'll I'll do this. It's very conditional. So um, be very aware of the motives you might have and the conditions you put around your relationship. Um, we should never have conditions. If someone does this, then I will show them love. Or if someone does that, then I will appreciate them. No, you need to respect, appreciate, love and um, give regardless, you know, uh, irrespective of persons. So that's your integrity. That's your um, duty, um, regardless of who they are. And, and that, that is a really in-depth topic of um, a biblical principle of not being a respecter of persons. And that takes a lot of maturity, a lot of forgiveness, and a lot of discernment to know when you need to move away from someone and when you can keep them in your life. And that, yeah, that that possibly is another video for you. But I think um, the what can you do for me approach is really dangerous because it brings in that um, level of condition um, and it can be, it can very, very easily move into manipulation, intimidation and control. So we, we can use those ways of being to manipulate another person to do for us what we want them to do. So it comes back to the video I did, it's about 40 minutes long, so apologies on what I teach my daughter and skills of a healthy relationship. When we're coming from that space of needing someone to be a certain way and trying to make them change and, and be a certain way, it's never gonna be healthy. It's never gonna be a healthy way to um, operate on any level. Um, with anyone because you are literally trying to well essentially change them and you can't do that you shouldn't do that it's not your right to do that um, so you need to be aware of what can you do for me so where a wife the wrong way to approach a man is to think that you need them to fill you up and you need them to do things for you. So I'm extremely independent, for example, and um, I, I do believe that that is in balance a, a healthier way to be in a relationship where you're not having external value in what they can do for you that will... Um, it's, it's, it's a tricky one to explain. I guess what I'm trying to say is if you think that they need to help you with your day, you'll be more likely to um, be bitter and uh, upset and angry and have contempt brewing under there if they don't do what you think they should do to help you. Whereas really we need to be responsible for our own days, our own lives and the, the duties that we need to do in the day that is our role um, and not expect someone to swoop in and do it for us. So, um, but it goes the other way that they shouldn't judge you and condemn you if they think you're doing your role the wrong way. So it, it can get very tricky, but if you have the things that you do and you get along get on with them and you do them with as much joy and happiness and contentment as you can in your role then you won't be expecting the man to swoop in and do things for you 
um, if they do and they happen to offer and you'll be like wow thank you so much you'll be truly grateful and it will be a delight um, and it will strengthen the bond rather than him saying oh you don't do that properly or you don't do this properly and then it's just a vicious cycle of negativity um, it starts though with not expecting that they will rescue you from a situation so the overwhelmed approach would be where you're wanting them to rescue you from the children or rescue you from the bad day you've had um, I just give you a heads up no one's coming to rescue you you need to take accountability and uh, responsibility for your own life your own actions and your own day so when you come together with that other person it's a delight to share what happened in that day rather than you need to rescue me from my life because how devastating is that that you can't um, you you would expect them to um, what can you do for me to improve me or my life you know or what can you do for me um, I think you get where I'm coming from it's a very a non-giving approach um, you know it's better to give than to receive so be a giver and be an unconditional giver so when we come from it in that approach of a surplus approach where we've got a lot to give we won't be expecting things and then bitter and disappointed and contemptuous when um, we don't get them and again contempt bitterness strife and things like that are the beginnings of the doom of a marriage so um, just be really aware of that that yeah no one's going to come and rescue you you need to um, figure out what you can do better and how you can make your husband have a more pleasant life and it's not from a 1950s kind of sexist way although I do believe there are set roles and things women should do um, <clears throat> I think it's fascinating that how it's um, kind of still really rooted in those principles of of helping him enjoy his day rather than bringing him down so again it's the the way we approach them uh, that can be the wrong way to approach um so the next one the last one would be that you suck approach <laughs> so i don't think i need to explain this much but um it really wraps the whole thing up in the sense that you know um praise not put down so you suck approach would be going in a put down way praise not put down so think about it like what praise can i go in with that i generally feel i'm not just blowing smoke you know up, up and backside i'm generally feeling this respect this gratitude or this thanks for this specific thing that he did. Look, I really appreciate the way you're so open um, to discuss things all the time. Or I'm, I really appreciate that you, uh, I don't know, took the bin out. I'm just trying to think off the cuff. Like, there can be so many things you really appreciate. Articulate it. Say it. Men need to hear that they're appreciated and what you must specifically appreciate so go in with that go in with that first that is very I mean think about it if you have someone approach you um, with the you suck approach it's it's already going to put your defenses up you're going to go most people just think they're amazing and they never need to change so um, again that comes down to personal responsibility but uh, we've all got something we suck at right so you don't need to focus on that. The more someone focuses on what you suck at, it puts a divide in the relationship up. It doesn't foster safety. Um, there's ways of going about it down the track that, that can you can delicately bring up things. That But the minute you go in with the you suck approach, um, the fences will be up. And that's for women and men alike. I mean, and, and the... And the person that comes to mind um, is Abigail in the Bible and so she had every right to approach David who was coming to destroy her family uh, and her husband basically uh, with all these um, men this army behind him 
her, her him she didn't approach him with the you suck approach she approached him with praise she approached him with gifts she approached him with in a way that she humbled herself um, to to praise him and be aware of the strengths and the things that she respected um, about him she did respect him she brought him things that were worthy of a king so she treated him as a king he may not have been um, necessarily safe in her eyes at that point because he was literally riding to kill her husband and so I think we need to look at that as a really good picture of a, a wise woman who approached a man and um, the benefits that befell her because of the way she approached him. So she could have ridden out um, and gone, how dare you got off her horse or pony or whatever it was. <laughs> I think it was a horse. I can't remember the account of the full detail. She, it must have been a horse. Um, and you know gone listen you know how dare you come and approach blah, 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 blah. but no she came with praise she came with humility she came with thanks and she came with gifts so that's who comes to mind and i absolutely love abigail in the bible and i think she had an amazing way of approaching a husband who um was clearly abusive on some level clearly toxic on some level but she still extended him respect she still knew timing when to say something and bring it up and she was wise in that area of how to approach a man so I thought I'd bring you her as a classic wonderful example of the right way to approach a man and this is not to make women less than men at all it's to make us able to be wise in how we approach them and aware of the different um, the different ways we think we are extremely different and we can often think the other one is nuts the other opposite sex is nuts because how can they see it that way but they just generally do so I hope this helped you today. I hope this has given you some insight. I do apologize these videos are all half an hour at the moment, but it's it's sometimes really hard to get everything to fit into less than half an hour. But uh, I really hope this has given you some food for thought in how to approach a man the right way and what the wrong way is to approach a man and some tips that um, you could think about next time you go to approach your husband. So I hope that's helped and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.